Hello and welcome to another edition of Unrendered. I'm Tony Rettisford and my guest on this edition is the Chief Executive Officer of the Tourism Authority. He is Mr. Glenn Beach. Glenn, um, you're no stranger to AKTV. You've come here with several hats. You were once a politician um, and I had you on in that capacity, but now I'm having you on in the capacity of CEO Tourism. I think I had you on in that capacity yes, previously as well. So. But it's been a while. It has been a while. Thank tourism, you for having me the back. tourism authority, tourism authority has just had the month of November as tourism month. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had the minister on an unrendered program, and we were chatting about what the month held um, and why the, you know, the awareness drives and so on around the particular month. Well, what I want to do with you in this edition is maybe look at the tourism product in general. Look at our trends, look at um, where the industry is, what we can hope for, what we need to do to fill the gaps. A lot to get through in an hour, but let's, 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 let's start somewhere. Comparing 2013 to 2014, what sort of year you would say 2014 was, um, tourism-wise we're talking about? Well, so far, I mean, we only have the statistics up to, I think, the end of October. Mm. Um, our, our yachting was up 5%. So yachting was up? 5%. Mm. Our stayovers were, was down, I think, about 1.2%. Mm. Our, our cruise ship remained basically f flat. flat, even. Mm. And our same-day visitors was down um, 20% about 24 26 percent which is expected because mm. those will continue to drop because of um oil prices the change in airfares so mm. when it was much cheaper to come over from barbados or saint lucia to to union island and mm. so on and do a day tour of the tobago keys mm. or anywhere in the grenadines that no longer holds true so that will continue continue to drop so that's that's the, that's a major sector that's in decline that's a major sector, and it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna change. That's mm -hmm. something we expect on um, the same day. What what I basically look at, I look at the other three, um, the the stayovers, which of right. course is very expensive, where we get a, a lot of the visitor expenditure from, the the cruise ship, which also we do quite well with, but there's always room for improvement, and the yachting, which is our biggest niche market. Right. What what would you say our product is because the many different aspects of tourism and countries go for different things yeah. you know some people go for mass tourism and even under mass tourism you have different categories yeah. some people some people look at niches and even there you have dif different categories yeah. what what would you say our product is it's even on the grand is fortunate i think we have arguably the most diverse product in the caribbean mainly mm -hmm. because we're a multi-island destination but not only because of that because we're also a, a, a volcanic destination and mm. a coral destination right. I mean, in St. Vincent Volcanic and the Grenadines coral, coral Islands. But we have four main niche markets and it's, it's funny you brought this up because in our planning meeting that we held a few months ago in which we brought in all our overseas agencies and offices, that was one of the, the big discussions. Usually it's yachting and sailing mm. which is our biggest niche. Right. The um, diving which is also big. Right. Weddings and honeymoons and ecotourism. At that meeting we decided to cut it down to three. And we put it to sailing and yachting. Sailing and yachting, right. The diving, which we have some of the most diverse di diving in the Caribbean and in the world, and romance. And the romance will include the weddings and honeymoons. Mm. Um, you know, the, there's a, a new thing now where, where people are having divorce parties or divorce trips. Oh, well. That's That seems to be a new I trend. I don't, I don't know how that could be captured well, under, uh, under romance. romance. <laughs> but, but, you know, what, mm. what has been happening with it uh, is that a lot of those people remain good friends. Mm. And they, they decide to have this because they don't, they're ending their, their romantic relationship. Mm. But they don't want it to be an end of their friendship so overall. The hostility with the it. The hostility with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, different, different things for, for different for different people, but those are the main three. And the sailing and yachting, I right. mean, talking about the best, some of the best sailing waters in the world, I'm not even gonna say in the Caribbean, in the world. Right. Uh, the diving, diverse product, because you have St. Vincent, which is volcanic, as I said before, but you have that cliff diving mm -hmm. off, the, off the rocks, and you also have the small critters. And then right. you go down to the Grand Indians where you have the coral, you have the turtles, the dolphins, right. um, seeing sharks, and that sort of thing. And then the romance, um, especially because we have three, three um, 
Hotel Islands, mm -hmm. Young Island, Petit St. Vincent, and Palm Island. Right. It's very big here. And I think if more of our hotels get involved in, the, in promoting that romance aspect, we'll even have more of that. What about the aspect of um, nature trails and um, how, how does that come into the whole product? You know, well, Lasso Frey and That and comes the, into the ecotourism. The, the flora, the fauna, the forest that we have. Yeah. Um, that comes into the ecotourism. Is that part something we're aggressively pushing? We have in the past, and we still do it, but not mm. as much as the first three that I, I just called out. But it's something that we do push in terms of our trails and the ecotourism and, and the lush vegetation of St. Vincent and things right. to do and the hiking. Because that also comes into part of the, the sailing and yachting also, and the diving. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, no romance. Because people look for things outside of that to do. Mm -hmm. They want the experience, and that's, that's what tourism is about now. It's about the experience you have. And... As I was telling somebody, I said, you know, you have to look at technology. And I think a lot of people don't understand tourism fully. A lot of people believe that you've traveled once and you become an expert on, on tourism. Mm. I tell my staff all the time, I said, this industry is no different to medicine or engineering or law. You have to continuously read up on it to understand it, see what the new trends are. And technology right. is such a big part of what we do now in the industry that we have to keep abreast of what, what, the, what are the latest initiatives in the so, industry. So, given the areas that you outlined, and I started out by saying, let's look at 2013, 2014. Let's look at the areas now and see where there is growth or where there is um, decline in the yachting and sailing. Is that growing? Yeah, as I said, up to October mm. 2014 compared to October, up to October 2013, we're up 5% so far. So that's... And I'm hoping that trend will continue to yeah. take us till the end of the year. What are the threats to that... Um, industry? That sector of the industry? Crime. Crime against the yachties. Mm. And, and one of the things that we need to understand, especially I spoke about technology earlier, there's not a group of people in this world, in my mm. opinion, that communicate better than yachties. If something happens to one now, be sure every yachty so around the world. So they've got a good world, grapevine going, huh? Great, an excellent mm. grapevine. And so that, that becomes a problem um, with, with that. Customer service, mm. making sure we deal with it the right. The protocols in terms of how easy is it for them to clear customs. Right. Those sort of things play a part. And obviously the competition. Uh, more and more people are looking to the to the yachting sector as a as a niche market. Mm -hmm. um, I know Dominica started to look at it. Mm -hmm. We have a, a very good advantage because we're a multi island destination. Right. We have those waters. We have waters for for the experienced yachtmen, and we have th those for those that are just starting off. So it, it's an industry though that that takes a lot of focus mm -hmm. in terms of where we advertise and so on. And I know a lot of times we we hear. But Mr. Beach, we're not seeing seeing you here. We're not seeing you there. But we focus on our niche markets. So unless you're a yachty and you're reading the sailing magazines, mm -hmm. Compass, that that a lot of incentives, you're not going to see a lot of our our ads because we have to focus and pinpoint where we need to spend right. those dollars. So let's stick with yachting for a bit, and we're talking about the threats. And you <clears> said <throat> crime for sure. Yeah. Customer service. I guess the hassle factor as well. When I say hassle factor, where people are hassling the yachties to yeah. maybe buy fish from them or Vegetables. use them more in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you, you've had an incident, or not an incident, but there's been an issue, rather, of the people in my room mm -hmm. um, protesting virtually about the whole arrangement with the moorings. Yes. What, what is the story underneath all of this? I'm going to give you it from tourism's point of view. Mm. And I'm very happy that this initiative is, is taking place. This is not about taking money out of anybody's mouth. Mm -hmm. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a yachting destination. Beyond that, going even further than that, Miro is one of our key. Yeah, because that's like the gateway to the Tobago Keys. It's the it? gateway to the Tobago Keys yeah. and Salt Whistle Bay is arguably yes. one of the best beaches very in the world. Beach, yeah, long, beautiful, the, beautiful. the water is calm, yes. everything. Mm. Tony, I don't know when last you've been into Miro. To get your yacht into Miro, into Salt Whistle Bay, mm -hmm. you basically have to be a, ex, an expert yachtsman. Even it, the speedboats are finding it difficult right, because, because people, people, have moorings people just, just have moorings everywhere. Not only do they just have moorings mm -hmm. everywhere, they're not insured. Mm -hmm. A lot of the moorings are not proper moorings. Mm -hmm. So that if an accident happens, we can actually be sued because people can say, but you're allowing these moorings in your waters. Mm -hmm. What can happen? Not only that, 
government collects no revenue from these moorings, which I don't agree with. Right. My take on it, and Port Authority years ago, since I was minister, had a mooring study done, done on all of St. Vincent and the mm. Grenadines. And I think that's what they're trying to put in place, which I welcome greatly. Right. But my take on it is not for government to control the moorings, but I think government should own the moorings or somebody like Port Authority mm. and then lease them out to people. Mm. So that would give control, you think? That would give control in terms of order, where the moorings are placed. Type of moorings. Uh, types of moorings. Size of boat that can go on a certain type of mooring. That, that's all And we have to mm. take responsibility mm. for, for, for these things. Because what it goes up to, what it gets into, Tony, is simply this. And you've heard me say this. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we're not up against Barbados, BVI, mm. St. Lucia. We're up against every other country in the world for this tourism dollar. Right. And we have to be better than good. We have to be great. So the people who have their moorings randomly placed, clearly they need to be part of the conversation. So, yes, so it should not be an adversarial um, matter <coughs> where, you know, the Ministry of Tourism sits on one side and this is on the other. How are you... Well, remember, this is not the Ministry of Tourism not the Ministry doing of Tourism. It. I said I agree with the... Right. The, yeah. Port. Is it Port Authority? I think it? Port Authority in conjunction with the Tobago Keys Marine Park. Right. And I don't have all Park. the... All the... So you're not... It's not, it's not a matter that's on your desk. No, it's not such. on my desk. But, but from your knowledge, how are they engaging the residents who were trying to play that trade? I'm not sure. To incorporate them into the whole thing? I, I guess what I'm trying to say, how are we get in a win-win situation? Yeah, I, I, I wish I could tell you. I have not spoken to Port about that part of it, that part of it, and it's mm -hmm. something that I plan to speak to them about next week because I don't want to see anybody lose something that's bringing money. Yeah, but there has, to be, there has to be some order to yeah. it. And I, I, and I think it's like anything else. If you want to do something new that people have been doing before, not a matter of just coming in and, and just doing away with everything. Mm. But I think it, it's, it's a matter of making sure that stakeholders are involved in the discussion. That, that people are given a chance to make that money somewhere else, but it just can't be a free-for-all in, in terms of these moorings. Right. So a lot of the times it's communications really, and it's, it's, it's really communication. how you tactfully deal with those vexing issues yeah. so that you don't create Alienate. a situation Alienate. where one party is unhappy and the other party gets to implement what they yeah. want to implement. But as long as it's an unhappy party, then there's no peace. But also, you also have to remember, Tony, a lot of times people also don't want change. They're scared of change. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to what you said also. That communication is the key. Speaking about it, dealing with it. I mean, and we've had the issue with standards, right. of which we're just implementing, which is, a, which is a great thing. All right. Well, let's hold it there, because we're at the end of the segment. When we come back, we pick up the conversation. This is Unrendered on IKTV. My guest is the Chief Executive Officer of the Tourism Authority, Mr. Glenn Beach. More when we come back.